uh, in Ports Faculty Commons uh, YouTube channel has all those videos. Uh, please feel free to visit, subscribe, and uh, take make use of that. And in in case of you know you want to uh, sub, you know share with your ideas uh, the the attempts made by you to implement uh, outcomes based education. Um, you know, in, in, if you have a different uh, way of uh, doing these things and achieving better results than this, uh, we all would love to know it from you. So please uh, uh, share those videos with us. Uh, you know, if we find it appropriate and meeting the objectives uh, of uh, the Imports uh, Faculty Commons channel, uh, we will uh, post a video there. Um, and that for that purpose, if you, if any one of you want to take uh, interest and come uh, forward, uh, and if you want to use imports outcomes-based education technology, uh, you know, for your course, we will be uh, more than happy to let you use it for free without any commercial agreements. And please feel free to use it, experiment, do some kind of analysis, research, and uh, you know, uh, you use that knowledge for you know your uh, uh, kind of you know publications also uh, and also if you are interested create a video and then post it on in parts faculty commons so we would obviously uh, my team will help you uh, understand uh, how to use in parts uh, you know and then analyze the outcomes uh, in that uh, my team will be uh, will help you in uh, training you and uh, you know helping you to use in parts so that's also is a, a possibility please feel free to uh, connect with me later on so now uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, unless there are any questions uh, i will move on with the next topic now uh, some uh, professor anuradha yes my email id is ajay at imports.com or you can also drop it to info at imports.com that is also fine so i'm just uh, responding to uh, a comment there in the question box. A any questions? Uh, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm going ahead. So now we are going to talk about framing questions and assignments. Uh, we are now at the last uh, uh, point in our program designing top down approach, right? It started with PO's curriculum course outcome designing, and now we are talking about the questions and uh, assignments so uh, we are familiar with this idea that uh, we have to take the students progressively from simpler ideas to the complex ideas so naturally based on that our overall um, uh, these course uh, overall assessment design uh, will also have uh, impact of this uh, thought process so if you uh, go back to the a blueprint that we have designed uh, this uh, is a area uh, semester initial semesters right uh, we are going to uh, deliver more of factual con and then conceptual knowledge and less procedural knowledge progressively we uh, start delivering less factual and conceptual and more and more procedural knowledge is introduced then again progressively less and less factual and conceptual more procedural little more introduction to metacognitive knowledge is uh, we start you know adding in our curriculum and then uh, obviously uh, more and more procedural and more metacognitive knowledge is delivered towards end of the uh, core graduation uh, program uh, obviously this is uh, visible to us because uh, uh, we uh, we also know that you know we try to send the students to internships uh, later on uh, in the graduation program we uh, give them the project work uh, something to to you know to be achieved in the group activities so all such uh, activities actually are designed to um, prepare them for metacognitive kind of uh, knowledge and uh, program outcomes associated with that the contention is that such activities are typically not exposed uh, to all the students and uh, we have but that is what something that is needed and uh, more and more meta cognitive uh, knowledge has to be delivered based on the requirements mentioned in nap 2020 and the overall need that is expressed by uh, futurists uh, that the very soon uh, the 
uh, we will face uh, innovation age and we have to prepare the students for uh, that kind of uh, challenge that they are going to face uh, in innovation age so uh, accordingly the program designs have to be des uh, designed now uh, so that you know we would make some mistakes uh, and we will learn it might take four five six years from now and by the time actually the we would start entering the innovation age probably by that time we would be really having wonderful knowledge about how exactly the program should be designed for preparing our students for innovation age so that's why starting early now is going to be really crucial so uh, when we think about the framing the questions right for more factual and conceptual and less procedural we will um, have uh, more of uh, you know remember and understand level uh, keywords we will choose and accordingly we will frame the questions also as and when we move sh the shift uh, is towards going towards uh, factual knowledge and meta accordingly less and less uh, percentage of uh, remember understand apply level and more or more questions related to apply analyze evaluate should be asked uh, to fulfill the requirement of uh, assessments so that's the orientation of uh, the framing of the questions and that automatically gives you an idea uh, that you know that what kind of assessment tool should be designed so for example if you are uh, want to assess the students are apply analyze level or evaluate level naturally you have to have uh, lab or practical kind of assessment tool uh, they are all formative assessments um, naturally uh, but uh, it gives you a better idea and control over how exactly the assessment should be designed and why so that answer of, of why is now available if you create this kind of blueprint at the course level so um, one of the frequently asked question uh, i believe that this is uh, this is fine now and we can move on to the next question here the um, next uh, point here which is related to uh, mapping of the CUs with the pos this question is asked many times uh, in fdps uh, how to determine the mapping of a co with the po the uh, i uh, in the first uh, during the discussion of uh, deeper discussion of related to program designing i had uh, uh, shared some some of my thoughts about why there is a confusion of uh, co's in the pos uh, it is actually mainly because we are trying to retrofit the already designed uh, programs which are there since last many years and we are trying to fit those into uh, the new framework of outcomes based education philosophy and that is why uh, there is a complete disconnect because uh, what is required is that you first identify the program outcomes and then you identify what curriculum has to be there uh, to meet those objectives but if uh, today if you have already a course uh, which is uh, there for you know uh, for example uh, I, I, I can give the example of engineering uh, programs if uh, you are teaching physics in the first year uh, it may be required i don't know but i really don't i'm not convinced uh, so far why physics has to be taught when already the student uh, comes from uh, hsc background where the physics chemistry math is is thoroughly uh, kind of you know taught to the student and then we once again introduce uh, physics and chemistry in engineering education so um, if we continue with that uh, kind of you know placement of the course there in that then uh, and then we if we are trying to find out what is the purpose of this course what program outcome are we going to meet here by teaching physics and chemistry to first year students and if you don't find any relevance there naturally you will not be able to figure out what how to map the course outcome to the PO because there is no connectivity there at all uh, so but if you do the things rightly uh, then naturally what is going to happen it is very easy because first of all you know that i'm going to design the curriculum for uh, helping the student to meet po and po2 then naturally the all the co's of this course will have mapping with uh, po1 and po2 naturally there is no need of any thinking about these co's to be mapping mapped with any other uh, program outcomes here because uh, all the knowledge that i am delivering here is related to factual and conceptual it is as simple as that but if you are now progressively teaching uh, skill uh, related uh, program outcomes then uh, 
naturally the 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 courses will start showing the inclination of uh, content being covered for skill category pos and then uh, for such a course you will have some you will start mapping this content with some of the program outcomes related to skill category of the pos so it will all be dependent on how exactly are you going to cover the requirement of po4 if you think about that then you will you will be able to find out okay this is the curriculum this is the curriculum which is going to be delivered to the student to meet the requirement of po4 so the course outcome related to such a uh, curriculum content there that particular uh, knowledge block which is related to a skill category you can easily find out okay this co means it is mapped with po4 it is very clear and straightforward if you uh, think from top down uh, design perspective so uh, it is actually very easy if you follow the guideline of uh, top down program designing otherwise there will be confusion and then just for the sake of tick mark uh, the po and the co's are being met i mean just mapped i have seen cases of you know every co is mapped to all the po's uh, of any course which is according to me not possible because uh, unless the the course is a project a capstone project which covers all the courses uh, delivered uh, so far and naturally so the co's of uh, such a uh, pro project uh, will be mapped to obviously all the program outcomes that could be the exception but i'm find i found sometimes that uh, all the co's of all the courses are mapped to all the po's because there was no logic known to anybody how to do it it was because it is a retrofitting of uh, the old programs to the new philosophy of outcomes based education and that's why there is no such uh, clarity about how to do it so uh, we can't fix that problem because uh, unless and until you kind of try to use this uh, top down program designing uh, framework uh, it is not possible for you to figure out how to exactly map the cos with the pos uh, so the, in the last uh, two days and until now we have covered these main points in our fdp program graduate attributes how they give us the program outcome we have seen that uh, then how we add the program specific outcomes uh, to make the list of uh, program outcomes comprehensive and then we identify the course outcomes we then think about the knowledge dimensions cognitive process desired cognitive process levels then we come out with the program course outcome designing we identify the assessment tools and the goals uh, and then we think about the uh, framing questions copo mapping and uh, we discussed a lot about uh, lower order thinking skills and the higher order thinking skills lots and hearts so that these are the points we covered in last couple of days and until now um, and now i'm i'm going to flip my uh, uh, presentation deck so uh, for a m moment i'm going to stop the sharing I'll, and then i'll do it as soon as possible when I, as soon as i open the next deck i'll share the screen but in the meantime uh, please uh, feel free to ask questions if any Uh, any questions so far? Okay. There are no questions uh, as yet, so I'm going ahead. Uh, the next topic uh, is uh, outcome space assessments and evaluation. So this is a deeper uh, thought process that we are going to go through. Um, earlier, 
uh, we talked about the general orientation of how uh, the assessments could be identified based on the cognitive processes we uh, identify for each course so here uh, we will go deep one step go deeper into this uh, philosophy uh, here uh, what uh, our program uh, educational objectives program outcomes and the course outcome these are the primary three uh, uh, levels we uh, consider in outcomes based education this is at the top and then comes program outcomes and then we come out with the course outcomes the scope of each level um, is also mentioned here it, this is very broad as i mentioned the program education objectives could be non academic also many times they could be related to something to be achieved by uh, ministry of education to build our nation uh, and uh, prepare our students to work in the uh, the domains and the you know which are going to be there in the future the demand will be different in 5 years or 10 years from now and we have to unless we prepare our students uh, we will have uh, scarcity of uh, the skills in the country and we may have to depend on uh, other countries uh, to get the people with uh, those skills and competence and we our students will be unemployed so if there is a kind of analysis available uh, we also can have a different goal in, at the program education objectives and based on that we decide what program outcomes should be there we come out with uh, some uh, set of program outcomes which are relevant uh, for our PO uh, program and then based on that course outcomes are designed so the level of the scope changes accordingly the time to learn uh, obviously the these are broad and teach students once they go out get the jobs um, and go for higher education maybe and after that we will start knowing whether whatever we had assumed is being really uh, met by the students uh, are they able to get the jobs uh, in the right uh, domain of work uh, well, whether they will be whether they were able to successfully implement uh, use the skills that were taught by us to them that that kind of analysis will be available only after the few years when the students go out of the college but here uh, program outcomes uh, can be realized within a few weeks or months and uh, course outcomes could be in hours or days uh, so the purpose of each uh, these uh, has uh, also uh, uh, you know you can see that uh, program education ob objectives provide us the vision um, program outcomes help us designing the curriculum right and uh, course outcomes uh, help us prepare the lesson plans so uh, that's how the purpose of the function is why a teacher should you know how the teacher also can look at these three uh, elements of uh, OB is uh, very nicely explained here uh, example of use also can be looked at here plan multi-year uh, multi-year curriculum you can plan using these objectives to be achieved academic objectives then you plan your curriculum that is your courses and then the course outcomes help you plan daily experiences activities and outcomes based assessments so this is the purpose of uh, use uh, of these uh, this information that we are creating it's not only uh, for uh, the sake of any compliance uh, this this is not there for you know some only for some documentation but we have to actually start using it in our day to day life and this is the way you can use it when, when it comes to course outcomes it can be easily used uh, for planning the daily experiences or activities and outcomes based assessments so i'm going to emphasize on how uh, course outcomes can be used for outcomes based assessments so uh, what should be assessed by outcomes based assessment and how so that we know that you know essentially uh, oba uh, we require outcomes this assessment requires uh, the outcomes which are measurable and observable otherwise assessment cannot happen so that is why we have to design the course outcomes uh, which are measurable another approach is to break down the individual course outcome into cognitive processes and then assess them individually that is exactly what we have done uh, some time ago and uh, we discussed rather uh, some time ago 
and then we have a clear plan of each course level uh, which, which may be needed to decide which outcome should be assessed during internal assessments and which should go to summative examination now that is the planning of planning part of the course so this when we think about our uh, course plan before at the beginning of the semester uh, this is the kind of uh, input that goes into that and uh, we use uh, knowledge dimensions, cognitive categories, and or Miller scale to decide what the desired level of cognition is for each outcome of each course. So that's that is very fun, important uh, uh, element of uh, outcomes-based assessment. Uh, when it comes to evaluation uh, uh, in outcomes-based education, the greater emphasis is on uh, assessments and. Uh, more emphasis is on formative assessments we we also it it, it mandates that the rigor and the uh, the formal nature of the assessment should be eliminated as much as possible and a lot of control could be given to the teachers themselves so we have to make, um, empower the teachers uh, to decide when to conduct the formative assessment and you know uh, by using the framework defined by the program designer so obviously this cannot be just loosely controlled uh, the framework of ob the program design will uh, provide the guidelines to the teachers about uh, what if, if you are teaching this uh, knowledge then the desired outcome uh, so desired cognitive process should be this and the question should be framed uh, based on uh, the chart given by us there that if this is the classify is the keyword and then since it is classified you have to choose this is the kind of assessment you have to choose so this is the framework given by us and if the teacher is uh, allowing allowed to use that framework uh, at, you know at his or her discretion then enough autonomy could be uh, given to the teachers to take a call about um, conducting the formative assessment so the formative assessments, uh, why they become more important in OB? Because uh, formative assessments help us collect the data, analyze the student performances, and take the corrective actions if we find that certain uh, hotspots are there, certain uh, weaknesses are uh, observed. And that's why more frequent uh, for, for formal formative assessments are um, suggested recommended when you implement uh, outcomes based education and less importance actually goes to the collect uh, summative assessment which is end term exam typically so uh, for the purpose of uh, qualifying the students whether they cross the uh, thresholds of uh, pass or fail we may continue to conduct the format summative assessments as a because of the separate uh, because of the separate important uh, educational processes associated with it we may still continue doing that however as far as the outcomes based education is concerned by the time you conduct the summative assessment the bus is already left so you you can't really use the outcomes analysis of the summative assessment to take any corrective actions on the current batch you may be able to use that analysis for taking the corrective action into upcoming next batch but uh, what to do you know you you will not be able to do anything much about it uh, when it comes to the current batch which has answered that question primarily right so that is the reason less emphasis on summative more on formative is what the recommendation is uh, of outcomes based education so alignment of outcomes instructions and assessment i have referred this uh, concept um, a few times uh, earlier as well that if uh, the teacher is making sure that learning outcomes are being achieved by the students then uh, the instructional strategies which uh, which the teacher has to think about what kind of activities in and out of the class will reinforce my learning objectives and prepare the students for assessments if the teacher is thinking about it uh, that is the freedom given to the teacher uh, to think about it and plan the assessments accordingly then the teacher if when the teacher thinks about the assessments what kind of tasks uh, will uh, will reveal whether the students have achieved the learning objectives i have identified so 
um, again we task is basically it may be a question also or it may be some kind of uh, activity given to the students uh, as a part of this assessment so uh, is it uh, good enough is it going to uh, help me achieve those uh, learning outcomes that is the kind of questions teachers will have uh, you know if, if they start thinking about implementing OBE in for their course so if uh, these three things uh, are not appropriately aligned which is outcomes instructional design and assessment which is typically which is actually it is going to be given to the teacher as a framework uh, you know based on the discussion we have so far uh, it has to be a framework given to the teacher so that there is no um, kind of you know uh, mismatch in the implementation of OB. Some of the uh, examples of mismatch I'm going to share with you. So if assessments are misaligned with learning objectives or instructional strategy, it can undermine both students motivation and learning. For example, outcome is learning to apply analytical skills and assessments measure only factual recall. So naturally, uh, in such cases, students to uh, basically uh, were supposed to learn applying the analytical skills but your assessments measure only factual recall consequently students hone their analytical skills and are fr frustrated that the exam does not measure what they have learned another example could be instructional uh, strategies focus entirely on summarizing the arguments of different authors uh, but assessment measures students ability to compare and critique the arguments of different authors something that was never taught is uh, is being assessed here so uh, naturally again uh, students uh, did not learn and uh, practice the skills of comparison and naturally it's a mismatch so again in both the cases what is going to happen in the first case you are likely to get better outcomes but it's a false positive because what you were supposed to measure was apply uh, level cognitive process but what is being done here is just factual recall so this is uh, related to remember so naturally students will perform better and that's a false um, representation uh, of uh, outcomes being achieved in this case it's a false negative uh, because you uh, did not teach in the sense that this teacher did not teach what was supposed to be taught and the students are being assessed for something uh, which they they were never taught and hence they will fail to perform here and uh, outcomes will drop out level of outcome will drop and then that will become a false uh, negative because actually it was not supposed to be like that and that's why alignment of um, outcomes instructional and uh, assessment is important in getting the outcomes based education right so how to get ob uh, assessments and you know uh, evaluation right so naturally dynamic program designing is very important cognitive processes we have already discussed a lot and uh, blueprint of the outcome is what is the new concept i'm going to introduce you to now <clears throat> so uh, we we talked about this already a lot so i'm just quick skipping that quickly and coming to here uh, to the blueprint of outcomes so what is this um, we know that uh, the course uh, code is there right and then based on that course code we de design let's say 15 20 course outcomes for, uh, after the breakdown of the content is done and the, we go through that model of identifying the uh, desired cognitive process and then action work uh, that will give us certain number of course outcomes so each course outcome we know that why this uh, knowledge factual or conceptual procedural or metacognitive is being taught because uh, we are going to fulfill the requirement of certain program outcomes so we already know what program outcome this course outcome is associated with what topic it is covering maybe it is normalization what subtopic types of normalization knowledge dimension conceptual cognitive process apply or lm implement i want to use this cognitive process and i want to have this assessment method lab activity uh, this domain is cognitive domain because it is uh, conceptual uh, 
complexity medium i want don't want to make it too tough for the students so the lab activity which i am going to design could be of medium complexity type of assessment descriptive type of question rather and type of assessment is formative so if we have a clarity of how exactly the teacher should achieve the course outcome in this manner uh, this framework will be a very good tool for the teachers to think about uh, how to plan their each session uh, and their entire course plan could be extremely clear to everyone um, and accordingly they can um, plan their assessments and evaluation of the students whether they are achieving those desired results so uh, it's possible and uh, doable uh, only thing is the right thought process should be and the method uh, should be in place uh, uh, at the institute level for every program and uh, such a, a blueprint of the outcome is possible to come out with uh, so uh, ob blueprint uh, now we have we have looked at the course outcome level blueprint i'm using this uh, term blueprint uh, a little frequently it might confuse you but essentially i'm trying to uh, show you a few models and uh, these models could be useful tools for uh, kind of uh, implementing the outcomes based education uh, you know uh, if you are if you are going to use it uh, implement the ob for the first time as a part of your implementation of nep 2020 or preparing for a nac accreditation then uh, if you are in hurry uh, probably these references could help you quickly start with some you know ideas uh, so that's the reason i'm you know kind of uh, exp explaining these in little details and presenting these slides uh, more elaborately these ideas with by using different uh, ways of presentation of these ideas so uh, here uh, uh, what, these are the intersections of knowledge dimension and the cognitive process we have we are familiar with uh, you know how to put these into x and y axis and then we we also know that there is a at the junction point there are certain uh, guidelines are available for us to think about how to assess the students so this is uh, this is a uh, similar approach here so what we are we this is just a kind of you know junction point remember and factual conceptual and remember procedural and remember but you can see that if you are teaching factual knowledge it you can also take the students to create level also even if you are teaching factual knowledge uh, the your expectation from where the student should be at uh, at what level of cognition doesn't limit it to only understand or remember if you decide to go take the students to create level it is possible so let's see why it is how it is possible so if you are going if you are supposed to assess the students at remember and factual level only then probably you will choose a uh, assessment which will ask the students to list the tools required for something if you are if you want to assess them for create and factual then you may ask them to generate a, a log of body temperature and then uh, it is left to the students to figure out what is the right uh, you know log table that should they generate what is the frequency of the uh, measuring the temperature uh, and you know and then whether there are any some other observations to be made along with the temperature uh, of the body of the patients uh, or some other engine uh, body temperature also bearing temperature for example how frequently it should be measured are you concluding anything you know is the lubricant uh, also getting heated up is it the sub um, desired level of temperature of the lubricant uh, inside the gearbox all such things have to be figured out by the student so they will refer various other uh, you know um, references uh, and uh, come out with their log table uh, in or the information data and present it to you so that uh, so this is also uh, if it is desired to take the students to that level it is also possible uh, naturally for procedural and understand level if you want the students to be at that level then you would define classify why sequence to be a particular sequence to be followed and you know uh, 
so they they have to come out with uh, some kind of uh, explanation to that uh, and that is if who can uh, come out with that kind of explanation only those who have implemented it experienced it by implementing it hands on sometime earlier only then they can actually uh, be thoughtful about uh, how to do why certain sequence has to be followed and if you want them to be taken at the create level and procedural then you can ask them to design an optimized process so it assumes that they already know uh, three to four different uh, ways of doing achieving the same thing but uh, you want them to assess which one is the best one and come out with your recommended uh, process for achieving uh, a particular end goal uh, so that is the designing uh, an optimized process for something which can be uh, an assessment tool at create and procedural level which is the highest level of uh, thinking uh, abilities in each of these categories of knowledge dimensions so obviously uh, you know uh, most of the times our assessments remain uh, in this area category and again uh, we are not sure whether we are, are asking the right questions uh, related to these combinations when it comes to uh, exposing assessing the students and ev evaluating their performance based on the uh, questions being asked so uh, uh, if if you now refer back our uh, original design here factual and conceptual knowledge was being delivered because uh, uh, these there are two po's here and this is the content that is delivered to them to the students to achieve the uh, po1 and po2 so uh, factual and conceptual definition we already know so if you are designing any tool for assessment uh, those may focus on factual and conceptual knowledge but the uh, cognitive process level is entirely is a it is our creativity we have to decide what where the where the student should be in this case if you want them to be at remember level then we know what kind of uh, assessment uh, action verbs should be used and uh, what assessment should be used for that for the same uh, you know po's we also want them if you want them to be uh, taken to understand level then naturally the different action verbs will come in picture and associated assignments uh, will have to be different in that uh, case so likewise uh, you know if for each such um, course and the content that is being delivered here uh, based on the what goals you are going to achieve here we we know that we have to uh, our framework should tell the teachers that this uh, knowledge block has to be assessed at apply level this is the keyword or action verb and this is the kind of assessment there should it should be it should have the questions which are asking to recall a process or asking to choose a correct process and then what the, the question is 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 entirely the teacher's discretion it's their teacher's creativity uh, the actual question that is that is being framed there but the guidelines are given to the teacher about how to uh, ask that question and why but now if you look at now procedural level related uh, knowledge related POs here this is the content that is being delivered if we are designing a assessment here which is let's say at remember uh, we want them to be at remember level list uh, is the action verb and uh, this is the assessment if we try to create an assignment for this content then it will become a problem because what is required here is although you want them to stu student to be at recall and remember level uh, the assessment should describe for example assessment should have questions which will make them uh, show exhibit the procedural knowledge so instead of mcqs and true or false what we may have to come out with a question such as describing a process to solve some problems e.g how to perform cpr and then it will these kind of questions will become more relevant for procedural uh, like knowledge so that is the guideline probably we need uh, for uh, defined for the teachers and uh, the overall 
framework will then help uh, you to implement outcomes based education effectively we we have discussed this already course level blueprint we talked about course outcome level blueprint also and program outcome uh, pro, entire program uh, blueprint is also discussed by us right so that was about uh, uh, you know about the outcomes based assessment and uh, now uh, i will just uh, see whether there are any questions and uh, then we can move to the next topic so we are time wise we are doing okay right now and uh, we have uh, around uh, 20 20 minutes 20 minutes to go so those that 20 minutes are sufficient for us to um, go through the outcomes measurement and analysis there is one question by professor rajkumar how is assessment and evaluation different uh, i would uh, the way i interpret this is that assessments are the uh, assessment could be of formative or summative nature lab practical continuous assessment tape or internal assessment somebody calls it at midterm exams all those are formative assessment summative assessment has been though it encompasses the entire syllabus of the course and you conduct it at the end of the term so those are all assessment examples uh, and various tools are used uh, for, for by you evaluation is about uh, analyzing uh, how the students performed and based on that you plan your next assessments that's a uh, analysis of the student performance comes in evaluation that's the way i interpret it but uh, please uh, if some others have any other uh, understanding and interpretations of this please feel free to share that uh, i'm going to now uh, pull out uh, a different deck which will take us through the outcomes analysis part of it Here it is. So uh, uh, we uh, we know that a course has outcomes, and uh, we uh, we also know that a course go has uh, different types of assessment tools. Uh, we and all these assessment tools are used by us to measure the outcomes. So there are some of the tools are called as direct tools, some tools called as indirect tools and direct tools have uh, you know all sorts of uh, formative and summative assessments indirect tools are primarily have uh, surveys um, uh, typically uh, which are not assessed by the teachers directly the students uh, will give their uh, feedback about something they will share their opinion about something and that is it i mean teacher is not going to evaluate whether it is right or wrong and assign the marks that's why those are called as indirect tools. So, uh, so this division of direct, indirect, formative, summative is uh, it becomes important from the perspective of the process to be followed for um, outcomes analysis. There are uh, there is a notion of uh, treating formative assessment slightly less important than the uh, summative assessment, but in my opinion, that should not be like the case. Either you treat it as equal formative and summative or give more weightage to formative because in outcomes based education formative assessments are more important than summative um, so uh, there is another notion of uh, assigning uh, different weightages for direct and indirect it is it is also okay fine uh, the direct tools are important obviously because uh, assessment uh, is done by the teachers the grading is done um, but in this case of the indirect tools, the grading is not done. But if you are adding um, some of the affective domain or attitude uh, uh, group related uh, program outcomes um, here in indirect tools, the assessments which are related to attitude level POs if those are becoming indirect tools then indirect tools also can become very important for example there are quite a few uh, assessments you can add for example uh, group activities and you if you give uh, a task uh, other 
an, a controversial uh, uh, scenario for a discussion and four to five students are discussing it and as a teacher let's say we are observing it uh, uh, peacefully in you know independently without participating in their discussion and just noting down the points so this is a very common uh, activity that's the reason i have chosen this example so you obviously you would start noticing that some of these uh, one or two students will emerge as uh, you know the they will try to keep everything under their control couple of them will keep uh, will keep trying uh, when they would get a chance to talk and couple of them will never talk they will be afraid of you know and they wouldn't know what to talk and when to talk so uh, this is what is being observed by you now if we, if we are treating uh, the the students uh, the performance of the students uh, of um, the students who did not talk at all in this group discussion of 15 20 minutes and then if we are saying that they they did not perform well then it's an incorrect way of uh, affective assess related assessment affective domain related assessment it is because such assessments are never meant for grading any student performance it, these assessments are meant for actually for the teachers to make some observations it is more of a teacher's performance rather than the student's performance major you know and then teacher is teacher is not getting uh, graded here teacher is collecting some ideas and thoughts uh, from these observations and during the one on one uh, or the feedback session or the mentoring sessions uh, with the students such feedback and observations could be either shared with uh, the group without uh, uh, you know kind of bringing in the personalities in that uh, and whenever you are in one on one discussion probably you can discuss with the student uh, what the observations are and how these could be improved further uh, the i mean the wherever the gaps were observed and that is the purpose of uh, uh, as quite a few assessments related to um, affective domain POs and if you start adding such assessments into indirect tools then in my opinion the weightage of indirect tools also should be as as high as direct tools because the purpose is uh, different and as we know uh, NEP 2020 wants us to prepare the students for you know those kind of uh, skills and competence in the future so uh, here uh, whenever you measure outcomes of coming from each assignment uh, they are grouped uh, looking at whether they come from direct or i'm sorry the formative and summative assessments and then based on the weightages uh, there they get uh, kind of uh, processed further so you would come out with a weighted attainment average uh, you know at the direct uh, tool level here separately you are you have to measure the co of uh, indirect tools and then once uh, you are ready with uh, both the numbers here you apply the weightage of direct indirect and then you get uh, weighted weighted attainment uh, once that is done so you have now an average theo attainment uh, of 54.5 percent at the course level independently you can also obviously this uh, attainment computation independently is uh, done at every assignment level every question level and that's how the numbers here are uh, kind of processed and uh, you have come out with 55% uh, as the average attainment from all these assessments so before we arrive at 55% uh, we have to actually go through the attainment computation through all the assessments uh, we have to look at all the questions being asked in all these assessments and then come out with average number right now in next uh, uh, next 10 to 15 minutes we are going to discuss about how exactly this uh, 55% is computed and then the rest of the thing is just arithmetic uh, uh, computations these are very easy just wait right this is a multiplication of weightages and uh, percentages what is the more important right now is just to understand quickly how this average of 55% is achieved so uh, I think there are a few questions. Let me just quickly check it. Uh, Professor, uh, 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 
is uh, professor mamad is asking uh, please give the examples of oba and ob print oriented pos in the fields uh, actually you have to connect two dots uh, in the earlier part of our discussion we talked about the program outcomes uh, down to curriculum design down to course outcome down to assessment so that's a top down design you have to use that uh, piece of information and connect with the outcomes based assessments that you are uh, designing because just the ex extension of the same thought that's your last leg uh, using this framework now you are kind of deciding what assessment should be conducted and what questions should be asked and what is the level of uh, cognition you have to assess and that is already defined in the uh, top down design of the program outcome uh, program design uh, so that is uh, to be used here uh, to come kind of you know the come out with some examples in fact actually i gave quite a few examples in fact uh, during while well, i was explaining about uh, i talked about patients uh, temperature body temperature or gearbox uh, bearing temperature these are the examples of uh, the, the kind of activities uh, that can be planned and uh, created when you want the students to be at create level uh, like likewise i gave example of uh, designing a process to optimize some some of the steps followed in some process so the, the that those are the activities nothing but the examples actually i hope that uh, i address your question sir so there are six steps uh, involved in computation of cos uh, first of all we have to find out uh, the mapping of the co to a question then we have to group the questions of similar cos apply them uh, student performance thresholds and then compute the question wise attainment and then aggregate the co attainment of each co uh, compare those with the targets that is the six step process we will follow uh, so uh, this course has let's say three assessments in each assessment i have just for the simplicity uh, i have chosen only four questions in each assessment that may not be uh, true right uh, so however uh, we can actually look at each each of these three assessments open open it and see what questions are being asked what is the mapping of each question with the few and then uh, this is a midterm test and then we try to see whether we can group these questions uh, based on the CO's mapping with them so we could do that here we can we can find that CO1 uh, there are three questions related to CO1 three questions related to CO2 two each for CO3 4 and 5 that's the way the uh, the questions are distributed in these three assessments uh, <clears throat> now we will think about the student performance thresholds uh, this is uh, nothing but similar threshold that we use for to qualify disqualify the students to call them as pass or fail which is 35 percent uh, level uh, this particular threshold level is same concept but use it for different purpose not to say not to say the student is fail or uh, you know passed it is to say whether the student achieved the outcome or not for that particular question so here uh, the course outcome uh, this particular question is of two marks and uh, if the threshold of is 60 percent then those who scored 1.2 and above are the students who are said to have achieved the course outcome one which was mapped to this question um, so this is a threshold level and i have arranged the students performance uh, in the ascending order and that's how this graph is created uh, so so this this will be the threshold level if you have 50 percent as the threshold level then one mark will be the threshold level here one marks so if you drop the threshold level naturally the, the marks to be scored by the student to 
uh, get qualified for that course outcome that drops down so you will find more students in above that threshold line if the threshold line is dropped that's a simple arithmetic so the question could be how to identify the threshold level um, so actually many uh, institutions which start implementing the OB for the first time they tend to use last three years average and come out with a logical number uh, that's that may be a good idea uh, but if you have a different method of coming out with uh, average uh, attainment uh, sorry threshold level uh, that also could be uh, a starting point because the moment you uh, conduct the first assessment after the, the OB implementation begins uh, the attainment computation is will be in front of you so if your attainment percentages say that uh, the attainment of uh, co1 for example is uh, 13 percent and uh, in some other teacher has conducted uh, assignment threshold is same for the other teacher also for co1 and that teacher has uh, computed the attainment and which is resulted into a higher number maybe 63 percent so one has uh, one student teacher has scored 13 another teacher has scored 63 percent uh, as the attainment of co1 um, so i mean uh, here this is not a judgment of uh, whether this teacher earlier teacher has not done a good job and the other teacher has done a good job that is not the major uh, we are trying to arrive at this is just a baseline that you have established when you conducted the first assessment now what is important in outcomes based education is uh, what is to be done now by the teacher uh, to improve the percentage of uh, that attainment from 13 to 13.2 13 to 13.5 13 to 13.75 and that is important so the degree of change in the positive direction is uh, the achievement of the teacher it is not the bigger number uh, of the attainment means that this teacher is doing a better job than the other who is scoring 13 14 15 25 percent of attainment uh, that's the wrong interpretation of outcomes based education implementation it is about continuous improvement so the degree of change in the positive direction is more important here and that's the real measure of uh, OB and student performances uh, uh, in OB. Uh, another frequently asked question is should the threshold be changed every year for the same course? Uh, my question, answer is no. Uh, there is no reason for that because uh, unless and until you uh, keep the threshold same for uh, you know three to four years you will not know whether the right uh, uh, remedial actions are being planned or not but uh, let's say uh, in the first year you uh, chosen a threshold of uh, 45 percent for a course and uh, the attainment computation showed that attainment is 95 percent 96 percent because the threshold is 45 percent then that is an incorrect uh, threshold because there is no margin left for your improvement you can't go beyond 100 percent so it's better to normalize it bring it back so in, increase the threshold to let's say from 45 to 60 percent and that will bring down the attainment uh, level of the students to uh, let's say kind of uh, 53 percent or 54 percent that will become that will give a good uh, uh, ground to you to take this attainment to the next level so once you freeze on then once you do the fine tuning because it was unreasonably high uh, there is no margin left for further improvement then you should in increase the threshold level bring down the attainment level to a level from where you can do the continuous improvement so that's the way to look at threshold adjustment but once you do that please don't change it for next three to four years just keep it the same and then you will be able to then do um, lo longitudinal analysis of the batches uh, in the future uh, joining in the future and uh, you will be able to then do a kind of uh, comparison between the batches uh, and plan 
some kind of you know, remedial actions based on the and insights that you gather so in uh, in this particular case i am choosing 60% as the attainment level and uh, uh, you remember there are three questions associated with uh, co3 so i am using this 60% uh, as a threshold level to compute the uh, the marks uh, as a threshold line for each questions because they have different uh, maximum marks here this question is of 5 marks so 60% of 5 is 3 per 3 and then the three marks is the threshold level here. So I'm going to now use this idea to, this is a great book of the student uh, of uh, who answered question number one of two marks, threshold is 1.2. So the, the bold letters represent the students and the green boxes are the students who are crossing this 1.2 threshold level. So they're all uh, meeting the requirement so when if you measure who the number of students who are above this threshold line and you know that will give you a ratio 26 out of 60 means 43 percent so way, the, how the way it has to be interpreted is that for co1 uh, uh, you know the attainment of co1 is 43 percent for question one for question two which is which uh, which is mapped to co2 co1 attainment percent will have to be computed again in the similar manner and it will have another number there so you have two questions mapped to co2 sorry co1 and both the questions are independently measured uh, for attainment of uh, students if you uh, drop down threshold to 50 percent naturally there will be more students uh, above this uh, threshold line naturally and uh, your percentage of attainment will change it will become 65 percent so um, my only contention is that don't be happy by looking at bigger number when it come when it comes to attainment competition it has no meaning no purpose it is about the continuous improvement that is very important how 63 becomes 63.5 or 64 that is important than anything else so this is eight percent uh, actually this uh, this is a typo here it should be higher than this so if uh, attainment is eight uh, percent then again this is not uh, to be criticized uh, that it is very low attainment that's not the point here so now uh, uh, when you come back to co attainment three of three questions so the same method we have used for computing the attainment for other questions here and then we come out with the average attainment in this manner so you sum up the students who are on at the denom, you know, numerator uh, and then uh, sum them up so you come to 96 and divided by 180 which is sum of all the denominators and so the ratio is 53.3 here so that is the average attainment of co1 which has come which has been contributed by three questions and these three questions belong to different assessment this is from test this is from mte and this is also from MTE, that is midterm test, for example. Now, there are frequently asked questions related to the denominator. So, whether we should consider uh, the students who were absent, or whether if we should consider the students who did not answer a particular question. Um, the common answer is that uh, you have to decide a strategy. So, uh, if you are worrying about lower looking number, and if you believe that by removing the absent students, the number is going to look good then that's not the way to implement OBE. it has to be a organizational level strategy whether to consider the absent students or not that's a program level uh, policy and uh, based on that uh, you may have to decide uh, to remove the absent students or keep the absent student as it is if you want to remove the absent student it will increase your work because uh, you have to keep finding out uh, every time who were absent and based on that you have to compute the attainment instead of that just keep the attainment uh, denominator equivalent to the class strength and that is good enough because all we are interested here is uh, bringing in consistency in measuring the outcomes and comparing the student performances over a period of time uh, and uh, that is going to give you a far powerful picture of uh, student performances um, 
and then instead of worrying about uh, the numbers are looking uh, low uh, because i am uh, considering also the absent students in the denominator there is only one scenario in which the denominator should be reduced uh, for the sake of accuracy in the computation and not because of uh, lower or higher looking num looking numbers it is to improve the improvement is it is to um, accurately compute the attainment uh, percentages uh, and that that is the scenario of optional questions so if you have uh, a set of questions which requires the students to only answer three out of five then some of the students will answer all the five some of them will answer only three and randomly chosen any three so naturally what will happen that the question number two out of 60 student will be chosen only by 15 students so in this case you should not compute the attainment using 60 student because it will be inaccurate representation of the attainment and that's why at that time 15 should be considered rather than 60 students in the denominator so that's the only option only scenario in which the denominator should be changed otherwise not mm. So, uh, in, in the case of CO2 also, we can follow the same method. We come out with the average attainment. In the case of CO3 also, same thing is done. And now, we have, we have arrived at some numbers here at the course level. So, at your left, you can see that these are the uh, attainment percentages of uh, these five COs associated, associated with this course. Now, uh, another dimension is uh, target. Re recall this. Uh, uh, computation here right so far so good no problem here right so I'm if I would now compare these numbers with the target suddenly the things will change so uh, the frequently asked question is uh, how to decide the targets the answer to this question is that you will not be able to uh, arrive at what should be the right target immediately within the first semester of uh, your uh, OB implementation it will take some time for you to figure that out and sensibly you can come out with a target number once you have enough data in hand because what the what is the purpose of target just to show um, you know where the next uh, level of the attainment should be it's a it's a basically um, uh, you know it's making sure that you know if whenever there is a fluctuation of attainment it should not be too bad so it should not be too far off from the targets given there uh, minimum uh, we expect uh, the attainment should be at that level but if it is falling down too much uh, then naturally there is a cause of concern there will be some natural variation uh, ups and downs sometimes the attainment will go uh, above the threshold also sorry the target also for a particular assess assessment uh, but uh, that could be the natural variation of the process so that's the only purpose of you know making sure that the targets are defined because they give us a perspective so this is the kind of perspective it gave us right so the moment i said that target is 55 percent that co1 and co2 target levels are now shown to be lower than that so naturally we have to know as a teacher we have to find out what went wrong there right so we can go back to the analysis done by us so we found that question one and question three were actually lower than the target so naturally uh, there, there was some problem here so if you go back to the grade book you found that there are so many students who, who scored zero and uh, that is a action item for us to uh, now take the plan the remedial action so that is the purpose of uh, targets so that's the third dimension we talk about first is student performance threshold then we compute the attainment that is also percentage and the third number is attainment person sorry the target uh, percentages so there are three different numbers all are represented in percentages and then i have found that many times teachers confuse uh, you know look understanding what these three numbers are many times they are very close to each other and that's also is a reason for confusion but uh, that so once you understand this concept uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, there won't be any problem of interpreting these three numbers correctly let me see whether there are any questions here um, Thank you, uh, from, uh, Professor Gagan, for appreciating this work. Um, okay. There is a question by Professor Kiran here. How to ch change the threshold after three academic years? Is there any formula? Uh, no, actually, um, 
if you the reasons for changing the thresholds will be uh, into you will find those reasons into the curriculum changes if your course uh, has uh, undergone certain changes uh, it might have some yeah, and if you believe that now you want to change the threshold because of that uh, you may do that but actually in my opinion once you figure out the fine tune the threshold level immediately after your first semester or within the first semester itself there is no need of changing it at all in my opinion because it is all about the continuous improvement the degree of the change the delta uh, of the change that is important and the percentage of attainment however many people think that you know the fine tuning is required further that is all right you can do that but stay keep it sim, you know same for a few years because that will help you to do apple to apple comparison between the academic batches and uh, that uh, actually gives you very powerful analytics of outcomes when you have three to four batches data tells you many things and uh, primarily such uh, analysis gives a lot of pointers to uh, program designers uh, many action items are derived out of uh, longitudinal analysis uh, that give wonderful inputs to program designing that's why consistency in the outcomes computation is very important Uh, so, Professor Anant, uh, uh, I will freely share all these presentations. Uh, I would actually love to present, uh, share these presentations uh, every day, every time. Plus, these uh, recordings are available on Infos uh, YouTube channel, so you can obviously use that any time in the future. Uh, there is a question by professor vidya uh, how to implement if i have only seven to eight students in my class how to use remedial teaching actually uh, is it re is, is it really depend on less number of students really does, does it matter this is what is i am thinking about whether it really matters whether there are less number of students or high number of students it's not about it right it's about identifying what these seven or eight teach students are commonly not understood. There must be something. And then fixing it. Okay. There are no more questions here. Um, we're actually crossing the limit of uh, scheduled time. So sorry about that. Uh, so, so this is the second concept is transferring the CO attainment to the POs. So there are uh, uh, mappings of the CO and the PO. We talked about it earlier. So once you are clear about which CO is fulfilling the requirement of which PO, based on that, then the percentage of the attainment could be transferred to those uh, related POs. So this is the way to transfer it. So the att attainment computation. Uh, could happen through various methods. People come out with some creative ways of uh, attainment computations, transferring the attainment of CO to the POs. They believe in certain frameworks. So these are all uh, the individual program designers' ideas, which the program designer believes that is the way to do the computation and uh, use these analysis for improving the uh, student uh, performances with respect to outcomes. So whichever way uh, is uh, helping you to come out with uh, uh, analysis of outcomes, that is good enough for you to continue using that as a framework for computation. Certain guidelines are given by uh, NBA and uh, NAC accreditation. Doesn't talk much about the, the method of computation, but NBA framework talks about it. And based on that, certain implementations are done by many, many universities in India. And uh, uh, I have used those examples here because uh, we implemented it uh, for them. So 
but I don't say that that's the right way of doing things. It is one of the right ways of achieving computations. So here, if you look at um, this was our course, which we started with. And then the, in a semester, there could be multiple courses, three, four, five different courses. And each of these course uh, will be meeting the requirement of different POs like this. So uh, or some of the courses are mapped with four POs. Some of the courses are mapped only with three POs. So that's the kind of uh, mapping is there. Uh, and this mapping is clear to us if we go, do a good job in top down designing. So if you uh, zoom out, these are the five courses of your uh, semester and uh, the corresponding PO mappings. So now if you come back here and create this kind of uh, program articulation matrix, somebody asked that question yesterday. Uh, this is a program articulation mat matrix and uh, this gives you clarity about uh, how each PO is being addressed by a course. And that's why uh, such a mapping will give you clarity about the percentages of uh, the program outcomes uh, that are reaching at the top uh, for every batch. So this is a batch that has completed eight semesters. That's a batch of 1620. Uh, whenever the semester, uh, I mean, each course of each semester keep kept contributing their attainment to the respective POs and the accumulated PO attainment is mentioned here. So once again here, if you look at uh, when you compared uh, percentages with targets, some of the attainments were below that target and those automatically become the action items for the program designers. Uh, so this is the batch of 1620. Then there is one more batch running here, another batch which is halfway through. So naturally more data will be available when the students uh, are progressing to next semesters. And then this PO level attainment will be more uh, meaningful. Uh, but earlier uh, in first one or two semesters of a batch, this PO attainment may not be so, uh, you know, meaningful because uh, when those things start becoming uh, more, more courses uh, are contributing the POs, probably this percentage and percentage start will start changing. But there will be a natural variation in the percentages, mainly because each batch is supposed to have a slightly modified revised curriculum. So there will be always a challenge there to maintain the threshold performances of the students. The teachers will change, new teachers will teach old in the courses, which and then that also might impact on the performance. Some of the courses will be dropped, new courses will be introduced based on the inputs received from industry or some other analysis that is done by us. Uh, some of the new assessments will be added continuously. Older ones will be removed. So that might impact uh, the student performance. So uh, such a variation uh, has to be uh, measured uh, using the statistical process uh, uh, control uh, processes, which is called as SPC. And uh, once you have the data, uh, enough data for uh, implementing the SPC any statistician many colleges actually teach statistics and these teachers will immediately be able to uh, use some models to come out with uh, uh, upper control limit lower control limit natural variation standard variation uh, special variation and they can teach other teachers how to interpret this data and that's very easy a simple framework can be introduced initially uh, to kind of uh, do the batchwise analysis. So uh, there are some certain uh, frameworks tell you to normalize the computations of uh, attainments percentages to ones and twos and threes. So they give you the buckets uh, that if you find your percentage within certain range, you call it as two or three or one. So based on that, certain uh, computations are done. So this is again a different uh, thought process and methodology of uh, computation. Uh, this is a screenshot of imports, uh, which is uh, showing you that uh, how attainment uh, percentages are calculated for a particular course for these uh, COs here, which are mapped to certain POs, degree of affinity, direct indirect computation, average uh, weighted attainment, target was this, whether or not attained, everything is uh, here computed and uh, that's the automation of attainment. So once you 
look at the batch wise analysis you can find out uh, which repo is below the target you can find out the courses associated with you go to the assignments and then easily you can find out uh, attend the problem areas so that's the remedial action this is how you can do the remedial action planning this is a real life uh, uh, implementation um, of in parts uh, you can see that this is the last four years uh, last three years batches which are already com which have completed the uh, teaching of this course this is the current batch you can see that progressively there was a uh, improvement here and uh, more students were started hitting this bucket of satisfactory and the current semester first time you saw the entry of students in exemplary bucket here this is a real life uh, report actually so this is how actually the longitudinal analysis will help you in finding out whether more students are now moving from unsatisfactory to satisfactory from satisfactory to exemplary and that is the goal of outcomes is based education not to fight with lower numbers or higher numbers it is about it's, it's a fight about moving more and more students from lower or lower to higher buckets that's the fight so that's it from my end uh, ladies and gentlemen um, uh, please feel free to share your feedback share your questions and yeah i'm just reading out a few more questions here some of uh, you have asked whether the certificate will be received yes uh, automatically a certificate will be delivered by this tool go to webinar one hour after after the end of this session you will receive an email in which you will find a link to download your certificate Uh, Professor Kiran is asking the remedial action is deci are decided on the performance of the current batch. How to how is it justified for the next batch coming? Good question. Actually, uh, you already know now that these are the areas uh, which are already known to you that students have not performed well in the previous academic year. You already have that insight. Now, when the new batch begins, you can start making sure that this batch i will make sure that these areas are not uh, will remain not remain the week this so what changes i need to do in my instructional designs will i have to frame some different questions that is a strategy you can plan and your course file will have impact of your previous batch uh, attainment report one more response i can give you professor kiran that uh, let's say you are teaching a course in fourth semester and uh, your students your course requires solid understanding of some foundational concepts which are being taught in second in second semester for example so you know that this batch which is coming to you in this academic year uh, has gone through that course which is foundation to you and you already know that these are the weaknesses found by that teacher in the students coming to you so your immediate action could be fixing those problems in first one one week i as i understand quite a few universities in india has started using this concept actually they call it as zero zero week in your whenever the new semester begins and they make sure that you know all these foundational level conceptual uh, you know knowledge is once again brushed and uh, communicated and you know taught to the students so that they are prepared for kind of you know the advanced level learning uh, but instead of doing random in that uh, zero eight week, you can use uh, the analysis of uh, the foundational course to plan your course correctly. So there are two different ways of uh, purposes of uh, using outcomes here. Thanks for asking that question, sir. So thank you very much. I think I'm I'm done with my, you know uh, with all my topics which I wanted to cover in this three day FDP. Thank you so much for your valuable time and great questions which has helped me also understand uh, quite a few, few things uh, from uh, which are at your end uh, please uh, feel free to connect with me later on uh, whenever you have any question we would love to respond to you thank you for the words of appreciation everybody i also enjoyed uh, interact with all of you bye bye take care 
and happy implementation of OBE at your institution.